This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and by popular demand, here's a smackdown between two innovative Sony Ultrabook slash tablet slash convertible slash laptops. We have the Sony Vio Flip 13 here and the Sony Vio Duo 13. We're going to look at them now. So here we have two Sony products, both 13-inch Ultrabooks. It's important to note with the Flip 13, that's this guy right here, this is also available in 14 and 15-inch sizes, making it a little bit more versatile for those of you who prefer a bigger screen. The Sony Vio Duo 13, just by its name you can tell, is a 13-inch or 13.3-inch convertible tablet. Both of these have full HD displays and the difference in what you're seeing in terms of viewing angles right now and brightness is because you can see what happens right here. They're both IPS displays, they have wide viewing angles, but eight, Sony's triluminous displays tend to be a little less wide than others. So anyway, nothing against the Duo, it's just the angle that it's at facing the camera right now. These actually both use the same full HD triluminous panel with Entrig Active Digitizer. That's the interesting thing. Right here we have this pen that's clipped onto our Duo 13. It has a kind of a cheesy little pen holder, but it gets the job done comes in the box with the Duo 13 with many configurations of the flip you're going to actually have to buy this pen separately for $40 but same pen same technology same screen same very wide color gamut we're talking 95% of sRGB and 75% of Adobe RGB on both of these so lovely screens obviously you can adjust the screen angle a bit more on the flip 13 another important thing you can use it that far back, which isn't super duper far back, but it's probably enough to accommodate most people. And with the Duo, you're looking at a fixed angle here, which really drives some people crazy. Now, I think Sony found a really good angle. I find that it's pretty good on the desk and pretty good on my lap. So it really doesn't derange me that much, but I know some people really like to be able to move it around, and obviously that could be problematic. Next thing to talk about here is obviously with the Flip 13, you get a full-size standard Ultrabook kind of keyboard. Not really very deep travel here because they're trying so hard to make these things thin, but the layout and the size of the trackpad all normal. Pretty good keyboard backlit, fairly even and very bright backlighting on this. Now our Duo 13 here obviously has a truncated keyboard. You can see the difference in the depth, but aha, it's not as much as you think because let's move the keyboard to the keyboard area here. What we have here is a whole big wrist rest area that's really taking up a lot of space. If you look at the area of the keyboard, and I think we have them lined up right now, you can see it's about from three quarters of an inch to an inch maybe difference in the amount of space that's dedicated going in this direction. So you're losing some space. It's a great improvement over the Duo 11, which had a much smaller keyboard still. But you can see you're going to be working with a little bit less space, particularly in the wrist rest area. Some people may find this is not enough of an area to rest their hands on. Others may be comfortable. I tend to rest, rest my hands on the desk more than anything else when I'm using this. And we have this teeny weeny, weeny little trackpad, which works, but it is small. So for those of you who don't want to rely on the touchscreen, well, and part of the reason you're getting this is really for the touchscreen probably, but the trackpad is a bit of a compromise obviously here. In terms of what's inside, you're looking at the same thing here. Fourth generation Intel Haswell Core CPUs. Core i5, Core i7 available. One nice thing about Sony is what you want, you can always order from their website if they don't have it in your local store. Gives you some flexibility, whereas some other models from other makers sometimes it's kind of hard to find with what you want inside. The Flip also comes with a Core i3. Uh, you're saving about $100, and I don't recommend it because you're losing turbo boost and you're losing some performance. Our Duo here is available with Core i5 and Core i7. Same CPUs on both of these. They're both i5-4200U, 1.6 gigahertz, and there's an i7-4500U option as well. Intel HD 4400 graphics on both of these. It's integrated graphics. With the Duo 13, you can get a little bit more high-end. It's still a little bit more posh product, actually, and you can actually get an i7 with HD 5000 graphics. Granted, that's going to cost you some serious money. You're looking at a higher-end configuration that can hit around $2,500, but it's there if you want it, and it'll give you about a 10% boost in graphics performance at most, but still it's, it's a little bit better, and well, every bit can count to some people. Neither of these is, strictly speaking, a gaming machine. They are Ultrabooks. They have ULV CPUs and integrated graphics, but they're good enough to play Civ 5, Left 4 Dead 2, World of Warcraft on low settings. Both have SSD drives using mSATA interface, and you can get them with 4 gigs or 8 gigs of RAM. You can go with 128, 256, 512 gig SSDs, depending on how you want to order it. Both have dual band Wi-Fi, aha, but not all dual band Wi-Fi is created the same. We have Broadcom Wi-Fi on our Duo 13. Some people have had problems with range and dropouts. 
We have not had problems with dropouts at all. It's been a very stable connection. Uh, connection strength and throughput speed not quite as good as our fastest machines. When we use an Apple Airport Express 802.11n network, a lot of Wi-Fi problems often have to do with incompatibilities with routers. There's so many different routers out there and, and wireless adapters built into notebooks. Our Flip has Intel's dual band 802.11n adapter, which is a very good, very stable adapter, not the AC adapter that has been problematic on the Sony Vire Pro 13 and even gave some MacBook Air owners some problems. So I think it's a good choice. So a little bit stronger signal, maybe a little bit more reliable, the Flip 13 for those of you, especially those of you with older routers that might run into some incompatibilities. Both have Bluetooth 4.0 high speed and both have NFC built in. Both of these are also very light. You're looking at 2.89 pounds and they're both fairly thin. And at 13.3 inches, they both cut about the same physical footprint size. Now, so the important thing is gonna be how you wanna use your machine. The Duo 13 is for folks who primarily wanna use it as a tablet, I would say. You have your occasional use keyboard here. It's okay, it's not my favorite thing to spend hours writing on, to be honest. We have this, what Sony calls the surf slider right here, and you can watch our full review to learn everything about it. It's a pretty good design, it's pretty sturdy, and it affords a lot of room for battery and for cooling, which is important. So we've got cooling vents here, we have some under here as well. All of our ports are lined up at the back. Bigger battery in here, almost twice the size battery before we get into more of the use case of the design here. So longer battery life with the Duo 13. Not twice as long though, go figure, but it is longer. Typically, we go like nine and a half hours with this, sometimes even 10 with the Duo 13, whereas we do about six and a half with the Flip 13. Anyway, all your ports lined up on the back here, some vents over here, so you're either gonna use it like so, or you can use it as a tablet. And really, as you can see, when you have it closed, the screen is always exposed. This is ever ready to be used as a tablet. You can use it with your digital pen. Great for note takers. Great for artists who don't need WinTab support in Adobe Photoshop and other applications that require it. Uh, Adobe has said that they will have support for Entrick digitizers, the Windows Ink API, really, by the end of the year, making this more accessible to both. But they both have Entrick anyway. Both equally as good for note taking. Both have good performance, low latency, so when you're writing you don't see any lag, and again you can watch our full reviews to see that. So anyway, form factor here, this is for you folks who primarily want a tablet, be it for note taking or be it for art. It is obviously going to be more vulnerable when you carry it around. Back is pretty sturdy, it's available in black or silver, same thing for the flip, and this is a combination of magnesium alloy and carbon fiber, though it looks kind of plasticky in the silver color. 8 megapixel camera on the back, Flip also has an 8 megapixel camera, surprisingly high resolution for a Windows convertible tablet. Two USB 3.0 ports, full size HDMI, SDXC card slot, audio jack, power. You're looking at the same ports on both of these. Now our Flip 13 is for those of you who still need that comfortable notebook form factor. Maybe you do a lot of emails, for example, you do a lot of typing. You, you get the full-size keyboard here, no compromises. Like I said, a little low in the key travel, but still a very easy to use keyboard. But it has this nifty trick, and this has to be one of the best slider, non-slider designs that we've seen. In fact, I think it beats the sliders, and it's right up there with the detachable ones where you can just pull the screen off for novelty and utility, but this is very functional. Release lock right here, you slide it off, and say you want to use this as a tablet or in presentation mode, you just do this and push it back. And like so, and you can see how it has a very thin hinge right here. And you can either set it up in presentation mode like so, obviously with variable angles, so flexibility for you people who like that there, and you can use it flat like a tablet. So again, same thing as apply. You can use this for note taking, use this for digital art. At 2.89 pounds and 13 inches, it's a little big, it's a little heavy. You're probably gonna rest it on the table, but it's not unbearably heavy. It's certainly easier than the 15 inch flip 15. And in terms of thickness, if we put the thickest sides together, you're looking at pretty much the same thing. There is no pen holder built into the Flip 13. Like I said, in most markets, you won't even get the pen in the box. You're going to have to order that separately. Uh, Sony does sell a third-party solution, which is basically a pen clip, just to hold it to the body of the product so you don't lose it. And our little duo has their little clip on. Actually, Sony provided a little thing right here, which you can slide the pen in to hold it. So we have a little hole right here, just something that's like an old-fashioned inkwell. You can stick your pen there. 
Flip 13, I think, looks a little bit classier. It's got this really nice aluminum finish here, brushed aluminum. Looks very nice. I like the black. It particularly gives you good contrast with the keyboard masking. Though, obviously, this is pretty futuristic looking, too. But aesthetics are generally not the most important thing, and both of these are nice looking products. The other important thing is going to be fan noise. The And this is the Core i7 version here of the Duo 13, so if anything, that would be a little noisier, maybe a little bit hotter. It's just about virtually silent, even using it in propped up mode. When you have it in propped up mode, it runs at higher power settings, and Sony has it set to automatically go to lower power settings when you're using it in tablet mode, so it won't get too hot or won't get too noisy. Not that it ever has gotten hot for us. And you can override that if you want, by the way. But generally speaking, very quiet machine. Unless I'm doing like playing Civ 5 or something like that, you just won't ever hear the fan. The Flip 13, as you no doubt have heard if you've watched our video review of this, has a fan that is always on, even when the CPU temperatures are very low, even when it's unplugged. Now, the Sony Vio Pro can be pretty noisy when it's plugged into AC, and that's fine because it switches to a more high performance mode, so you get more oomph out of the product. But this guy, even if it's unplugged, even if it's not doing much, even if the CPUs are at like 36 degrees centigrade and 100 is allowable maximum, 50 is where most manufacturers have their fans kick on. Sony always has the fan going. Smaller product usually means a more higher pitch fan, so it can be annoying. For those of you who want complete silence, you, you want this for school to use in a library, and you don't want people staring at you because you have a little mini Hoover vacuum cleaner, that's kind of the Flip 13 right now. Now, Sony certainly could release a BIOS update to change that fan behavior because it is kind of overkill. It's running so darn cool that there's just no reason for it. Lastly, price difference. The Duo 13 is a pretty pricey tablet, and it runs about $200 more for any given comparable configuration than does the Flip 13. So you're going to be spending more money for that Duo. You are going to get longer battery life, and at least for now, a quieter running machine. Uh, but if, if every penny counts, and particularly, I think, if you want the more versatile notebook kind of design, you're not an always tablet user, well, that might help make the decision for you. But in the end, that is what it comes down to. There's, you're going to be paying significant amount of money more for your Duo 13, but it's which form factor is more useful to you, which appeals to you more, and that really should be how you make your decision. In terms of core performance, in terms of what these machines can do, it's the same thing. You've got Windows 64-bit here. They can run Photoshop, MS Office, um, IDEs for development environments, that kind of thing. They're all both equally capable. Likewise, the software bundle is pretty much the same, too. Sony loves to throw their products or their shortcuts at you, like Crackle for movies, that kind of thing. Both get bundled with ArtRage 3.5, which is a very nice Windows API Inc. aware program that supports pressure sensitivity. And there's now updates out there for ArtRage. For those of you who can buy the Duo 13, if you're finding your pen pressure isn't working right there, you'll get pushed an update when you launch ArtRage, and you do want to take that to make sure you get the best pen pressure sensitivity. Both of these, again, have Entric digitizers, 256 levels of pressure sensitivity, palm rejection because it is a digital pen. As soon as it senses the pen against the screen, it will ignore your palm, which is what you want it to do. So that's the Sony Vio Flip 13 versus the Sony Vio Duo 13. Both are available now. The Flip is brand new, so it's a little harder to find. And you can see the specs are basically the same on these. The form factor is really the deciding thing. And there's a price difference, too. That Duo 13 is a little bit more money. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to visit our website for reviews of both of these, watch our video reviews of both of these, and subscribe to our YouTube channel.